Now, the countdown to the Netball World Cup in Cape Town is truly underway, and we are joined now by the Director General of the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture, or Mr. Vosmuzim Kize, here to talk to us about the preparations. Babum Kize, Saubona, thank you so much for joining us on Sports on Morning Live. Good morning, and good morning to your viewers. Now, we know good to this World Cup is coming. It's going to start in July next year. In terms of the preparations from an infrastructure perspective, would you say that we are on track to host this World Cup? Yes, we are uh, quite ready. Uh, even if it was going to be, we were told it's starting tomorrow because both of the infrastructure uh, at the Cape Town ICC is ready, accommodation is ready, and the Cabinet has established the IMC, which is constituted of a number of ministers uh, who are supporting this uh, particular project, uh, which is the Netball uh, World Cup. And then we've got also uh, the technical team uh, constituted of various stakeholders uh, to ensure that the preparations are on track. We have a, a team uh, that is really been, has been fully assembled and uh, there is a clear indication that uh, the commitment is we will not just be hosting, mm. but we should be able to secure the medal. Uh, of course, the first prize is being uh, the winning the World Cup, which is the first in Africa uh, to have it been hosted. And South Africa has been fortunate to be given that privilege. Uh, so I believe that uh, from both the infrastructure perspective, uh, because the Minister Mteto established the board uh, last year, and that board is fully operational and they, they filled the posts uh, that are crucial, uh, including the tournament director in uh, Priscilla Masisa. Um, so I think uh, with uh, both the, from the perspective of infrastructure, as well as the perspective of uh, the structures, the systems and everything else, we are fully ready to host this uh, mega event which would be the best uh, i believe in the world and i'm excited at the fact that you say in terms of preparations of the team we're also on track because obviously we do have that home ground advantage and we do want to see the south african ladies lifting up that medal but let's also talk about next week on the 16th of august is a very big day tell us more about what we're expecting to happen on the 16th and the festivities planned on the 16th uh, it's an amazing opportunity for the Gilbert, who is a sponsor for the ball that will be utilized uh, to be revealing it uh, to the world uh, at Sun City. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will be then having uh, festivities that will include, of course, uh, the schools that will then receive also equipment, uh, be supported as they will be there to ensure that we create the hype, we create um, a huge interest, both just in South Africa but as we say, this is Africa's uh, Netball World Cup, therefore in, in our continent, but also just in the world. So we will be having a very, very powerful uh, revelation of a very powerful speedball that will be fit for the queens when they take on the court. I'm going to ask you this. Have you by any chance seen the ball yet? No. Or is it going to be revealed to all of us at the same time? It will be revealed to all of us at the same time. And then uh, I'm sure we will then see how much work has been done in, both in terms of design and also in terms of just the look and feel of that ball befitting a tournament of world-class Netball World Cup. Indeed, and we talk about the ministry playing such a big role in terms of the legacy that will be left behind following the tournament. What would you say are some of the areas of interest from the tournament that it would leave behind for Abant Balaninigism Africa in terms of legacy Umisipela E World Cup? No, when, the, when we, bid, we made a bid, there were very clear commitments uh, that uh, were then made, including the issue of the legacy because we believe that the netball, which is the most number one sport for any girl child, although even the boys now do play it, but then the legacy includes a number of things. Firstly, is that we are having currently projects to build the so-called the sport courts uh, for netball mm. in each and every province, uh, which will then remain uh, post the World Cup so that uh, the communities, the kids, as well as uh, the professional teams can utilize uh, those netball courts 
uh, for them to play as a leaf behind. But secondly, uh, 13 wooden sprung floors will also be provided to each and every province, plus to the other two African countries, uh, so that uh, we are able to then uh, make sure that uh, those sprung floors are used for professional uh, games, as we want to make sure that at the end of the day, mm. netball is professionalized. It's not just seen as an amateurish thing, but also when uh, the third part is, of course, skills development, which is capacity building and training, particularly for coaches. And uh, South Africa has been fortunate that uh, over and above being given the response on the coach training of coaches, mm. uh, based on our depth here, uh, that uh, netball, well, World Netball has asked that we also uh, provide that training to America where netball is not yet very popular. But there will be the training in Botswana, training in Uganda, uh, to make sure that uh, we develop skills and we have more coaches to coach the netball who are at least uh, having a grading of level two. So those are the main key areas of uh, legacy projects we are looking forward to have so that uh, every child, whether in the rural areas or in the townships, they are able to have access to quality netball training from a very young age mm. because South Africa we are made to be the nation of winners and the world beaters. But it only starts with a key area of development, particularly in schools. That's why even at Sun City, there will be schools, mm. about four schools that will be also given the balls as well as the equipment um, that will also they can use uh, at their schools because we believe in development pipeline mm. so that we've got more professional netball players that we can export to the world. And that's very important, DG, because so often when we look at different sporting codes in South Africa, we keep on talking about how we've got the raw talent, but we just are lacking in terms of development. So for you now to sit and say to us that this is a major focus for you as a department is actually inspiring. Something else I want to touch on leading up to the World Cup or the Africa qualifiers, which we understand will be taking um, place in Swane, but there's also a major reveal that's going to happen during those qualifiers. Talk us through that. Yes, um, we will be having uh, 10 nation, African nations that will be competing uh, in Swane. And uh, of those that will be competing there, two will qualify uh, to be part of the African contingent that will be participating at the World Cup. Now, already South Africa and Uganda have qualified uh, because um, South Africa is hosting. But um, at the same time, Uganda is number six uh, ranking in the world. So they take then the place of South Africa. And then two of those teams will then uh, qualify uh, over and above South Africa and Uganda out of these Africa qualifiers. But the most interesting thing will be the mascot mm -hmm. uh, that will uh, then be unveiled. And uh, I'm sure, and uh, as we have seen um, in Birmingham, a Commonwealth game, the mascot creates such a hype and a mood uh, that we all end up uh, really feeling part and parcel of the event. And then um, uh, wait and see, uh, great work has been done there. And we appreciate that support from uh, Netball uh, World Cup. And I'm sure that uh, Netball um, will be proud of what they will see. And Africa has got the most greatest opportunity to demonstrate to the world that uh, we are capable mm. of hosting an event. And this one, because women have always been treated as if it's secondary Mm. Uh, to everything it's else. An afterthought. We want to make sure that uh, this World Cup demonstrates the capacity of women to do things by themselves, for themselves, and that is why most of the responsibilities are also led in key positions by women. But you can see that mascot, it will be an amazing uh, um, uh, mascot that you will see that day. Oh, we're certainly looking forward to that. Now, DG, it's not every day that we're able to get you here in the studio to talk about the Netball World Cup and other sports-related matters. So since I do have you here, I'm just going to ask you this question. We know that um, in terms of Formula One, looking to come and bring a race to South Africa in 2023 on that race calendar, have there been any discussions that have been had with the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture? And is there an interest from the department pers pers perspective to be involved in that? Yes, we've been approached uh, around that uh, by um, Formula One South Africa and uh, where they had uh, an engagement with the minister and the department presenting their 
um, interest or a request that uh, they will be hosting this event. And um, of course, because they don't seem to be needing much of any money uh, from government, uh, as they say, they will be able to do this. I am, uh, we are attending to that matter. I can't give details because we just had a preliminary meeting uh, after they have met with the minister. It's now going to be our meeting with them. But um, we do believe that uh, with the economic recovery and reconstruction plan, sport plays a crucial role. And if that can assist to rebuild the economy in this sector, uh, those would be the key considerations, uh, creating jobs uh, for people, but also creating interest uh, of our young people. We can't continue to have only Louis Hamilton mm. as the Formula One best in the world, uh, being black, and he has raised it himself. So our feeling is that um, if affordable, uh, of course, and then also contributing to the economy of the country, we have to weigh all those pros and cons uh, for us to be able to, to come up with a decision. Mm. But uh, uh, we believe that after the meeting that was very fruitful and constructive, that that matter is receiving uppermost attention. Mm. And DG, I mean, we've seen the strides that you as a department have made, and particularly when it comes to cricket, you played a very important role in the SJN hearings. Um, so at the end of the hearings, you as a department, are you happy with the measures that were put in place to try and prevent the injustices of the past from taking place again? Uh, it's very important to have a transformation in every aspect of life in South Africa. Mm. We can't pretend there was no apathy. And therefore it is important that uh, in sport in particular, we do eradicate any form of racism, perceived or actual. Mm. And uh, we are happy that cricket uh, South Africa took the steps they did um, uh, to have this particular very critical healing process. Um, because now at least everybody knows that uh, there is no room for racism. And then um, the measures that have been taken, uh, we, we, we really believe that uh, Cricket SA has treated this matter with the necessary um, uh, attention, mm -hmm. and but also they have uh, acted on those recommendations and where there was a sense that um, <clears throat> we shouldn't blame players who didn't feel uh, ready to come and begin to, to testify or accuse one another. It is a wrong perception to do so because mm. this is a matter that is extremely personal. Um, they had to raise the matter. The matter is now in the public domain. Our responsibility as a society is to support cricket and sport in general mm. to really get rid of itself of these ugly uh, racist tendencies that raise their, uh, their heads uh, from time to time. So I believe cricketers uh, have taken measures that do really uh, bring to the fore that there is no room for racism. And it's not only cricket in South Africa that is facing those challenges. And it's not only racism, but also sometimes it's issues of gender uh, that uh, women are put at the back foot uh, as if they are not good enough to be in the sporting uh, higher echelons. Mm. So we, we are addressing transformation as an overall strategy, not just racism. Uh, mm -hmm. but also the issues of gender um, needs to be always at the forefront of transformation. So Cricket SA and also using our, we've got what we call eminent persons group, EPG, mm -hmm. who makes reports to us at focusing on this issue of transformation every year and uh, in the 19 codes of sport. And we then have to act on their recommendations. Um, and one of the areas is this area of transformation mm. at every level of sport. And I mean, DJ, you've touched on this just briefly, just in terms of gender equality in sports. And we're really happy that Banyana Banyana went into that WAFCON in Morocco and they secured a victory. And it sort of brings a spotlight to women's sports and says, we as women are capable, we can get the results. But now it's about just engaging in daily activity to ensure that we level the playing field and the playing ground for men and women. Of course, um, the, the unfortunate thing in, in, in South Africa at this stage is, is sometimes criticism that is only leveled at government. Mm. Uh, sponsorship, private sponsorship, plays a crucial role 
in achieving equality and parity. And I think with the performance of Banyana Banyana, um, more and more of the, the sponsors mm. will come on board to make sure that uh, there is parity uh, in this regard. Um, but as government, as we saw what the minister and the president uh, Ramaphosa have made a huge stride to say, let's begin with reward and recognition mm. for Banyana Banyana to send a message to sponsors to say, please come on board. Because at the end of the day, the only way to have a sustainable equality in sport is when there is great investment. And Indeed. we think private sector must not see women's sport as, as, as a cost, but more as an investment, because that is what we really need to achieve that. And finally, I think for the Netball World Cup, we do have a Netball Fridays, mm -hmm. uh, which we want to make sure that everybody participates in and that they must wear their netball uh, t-shirts on Fridays. As I'm wearing this one, you can see, I'm sure it makes sense. It does and, make uh, sense. <laughs> it only costs about 280 um, uh, rands. And if you want to find it, mm. you can go to Netball uh, SA website to, to order and get this netball. But we want everybody in this country every Friday to, to wear, wear netball netball tops. Yeah. Thank you so much, DG, for your time this morning. And we'll see you on the 16th as you unveil the Netball World Cup 2023 ball. Yeah, let's make it happen. <laughs> that is much. the Director General of the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture here in South Africa, Mr. Vosmuz Mkiza. Talking all things Netball, the 16th of August will be launching that ball. And the Africa qualifiers, of course, from the 21st until the 27th of August.